Okay, case five, 33-year-old asymptomatic female has a chest x-ray. Okay, so let's go through our approach here. Normal heart, size, position, borders, nothing high density, no gas, mediastinum. Okay, no shift. The contours are abnormal. And if it wasn't apparent to you right away, we'll show you normal to compare to. Um, there's clearly a lobulated, thickened right paratracheal stripe here, and there's thickening of the, of the left paratracheal stripe here. Remember in the first video, we showed you where the aorta is, where the pulmonary artery is, and we talked about this AP window. An AP window should be concave. Here, there is a convex density here, so there's something in the AP window. Okay, comparing the lungs, the lungs are normal, kind of cut off here, but they're normal on both sides. And then looking up both lungs as well, no pleural effusion or pneumothorax. Um, soft tissues and abdomen are okay. Looking at the apices at our first checkpoint, they're okay. Second checkpoint, the hyla. These hyla do in fact look very full and abnormal. And we'll show you a normal in comparison to train your eyes to picking up this abnormality. If we look at the lateral, the retrosternal airspace is normal, retrocardiac is okay, spine signs okay, costovertebral angles are okay. Looking at the hyla, there are too many densities in the hyla. This is abnormal. So remember, the trachea is this lucency here. We have the location of the right pulmonary artery here and the left pulmonary artery here. First of all, there's too much going on there. And second of all, down here we should have a relatively we should have a relative paucity of densities, and there are not. So there's density here, density there, density there, density here. There is clearly hyalur adenopathy in this case as well. So in this case, based on what we've seen so far, we're calling mediastinal and hyalur adenopathy bilaterally. If you're still confused or if that wasn't apparent to you even when we went through it, have a look at our normal case here. Look at the normal contours of the mediastinum. Our AP window is usually concave. It's convex here. Our paratracheal regions here, the right paratracheal stripe should be thin. It's very thick here. And there's a lobulated contour to both sides of the mediastinum, which is not normal. Look at normal hyla. Sometimes the vessels can look more prominent, and that's okay, but they're still very linear and vessel-like. These are clearly very lobulated and rounded, these are abnormal hyla. If we look at the lateral, this is our abnormal situation. This is the donut sign. Look at a normal one. So our trachea goes in the middle. We have a vascular structure anteriorly and posterior superiorly with a relative paucity inferiorly. Again, these are very linear. Here we have lobulated abnormalities all around. This should be a relative paucity down here of densities and there's not. This is what lymphadenopathy looks like on a lateral view. So we have bilateral, hyalur, and mediastinal adenopathy. The purpose of this video is not to go through differentials, it's to train your eye, but the primary differential is that of sarcoidosis, ancylicosis, lymphoma, aka lymph nodes everywhere, and infectious abnormality, specifically tuberculosis. This is a case of sarcoidosis. Okay, another case. Go through your approach, and then we'll show you the abnormality. Okay, so the heart is okay. Mediastinum position is okay. Contours. There's a convex abnormality here on the right that is suspicious for lymphadenopathy or some sort of mediastinal mass. So what's the next step? This is a 40-year-old female with weight loss. We need to do a CT. The rest of the chest x-ray is, is normal. If the abnormality wasn't immediately apparent to you, again, here is a normal chest x-ray. Notice the normal contours of the mediastinum and look at our abnormal chest x-ray here. So there's a lobulated contour here and there's thickening of the right paratracheal stripe here. This is a normal right paratracheal stripe here on the right. It's a few millimeters here, it's very thick. So a CT was performed. This ended up being mediastinal adenopathy in a patient with lymphoma. Again, the key here is to pick up the abnormality in the x-ray. That's the purpose of this video, and to then ask for a CT when you see something abnormal. 
So let's go through other examples of lymphadenopathy to help you train your eye. The differential includes, broadly speaking, malignant things, inflammatory abnormalities like sarcoidosis that we showed earlier, and infectious abnormalities like tuberculosis or fungal infections, or reactive adenopathy. So this is a case of a lung cancer in the right hilum with lymphadenopathy in the right mediastinum uh, that is metastatic. This is a case with clear mediastinal and right hilar adenopathy, so asymmetric adenopathy. This happened to be in the setting of lymphoma. This is the same case of sarcoidosis we showed earlier. This is a case of tuberculosis, so again, abnormal contour on the right and abnormal hilum here on the right as well. So there's unilateral hilar and mediastinal adenopathy in the setting of tuberculosis. Again, there's nothing specific about this appearance that would make you say tuberculosis right away. The key is to recognize that there's lymphadenopathy, it's abnormal, and give a differential diagnosis, and then direct the clinical management further with either a CT scan or further clinical evaluation. Okay, case seven. This is a 60-year-old patient who was admitted to the ICU and has a dropping oxygen saturation. So have a look. Okay, so step one in our approach is to look at lines and tubes. So here's an endotracheal tube going down the trachea. And you'll notice that the crina is right here. And this endotracheal tube goes beyond and into the right mainstem bronchus. The entire left lung is opacified. So there's white out of the entire left lung. And the heart and mediastinum are shifted towards the left. The right lung is aerated and the left lung is not. That resulted in left lung collapse. So you have white out of the left lung. And when you have collapse of the left lung, you have pulling of the mediastinum towards the collapse slash volume loss. This is an outline of the trachea, the crina, right and left mainstem bronchus. The normal position of the endotracheal tube is shown here. Uh, the endotracheal tube should be five to seven centimeters proximal from the crina. If the patient flexes or extends their neck, the position of the endotracheal tube will change. If they flex their neck or put their chin down, the endotracheal tube will move down. If they extend their neck or move their chin up, the endotracheal tube will move up. The way you remember that is you remember the phrase, the hose goes with the nose. So back to our same patient. This is the same x-ray we showed here on the left earlier. Here, the endotracheal tube is retracted. Carina is down here, so this is an, an okay position. And now the left lung is beginning to aerate. So the esophagus and the stomach are normally positioned as shown here. When we're looking at an NG tube, we want to follow the tube the entire way down and into the stomach. We see the tip in the stomach here. Oftentimes, you'll see a side hole uh, that should be beyond the GE junction as well. So here's another case. Where's the feeding tube? Okay, so we follow the feeding tube down. It should extend into the stomach. Here, it is in the right mainstem bronchus. So obviously, it's important to recognize this as feeding through this tube uh, would be catastrophic. Call the referring uh, clinician urgently. Okay, case 10. 60-year-old male with shortness of breath. So going through our approach, no lines and tubes. Heart is okay. Mediastinum. There's abnormality here on the right. The right paratracheal stripe looks thick, but if you actually look at it, it's not necessarily the right paratracheal stripe. It looks like the entire right upper lung is abnormal. So there's an opacity here on the right that is abnormal and asymmetric from the left. We don't see anything else in the lungs. You'll also notice that the diaphragm here is tented upwards, and the right hyla is pulled upwards as well. There's no pleural effusion or pneumothorax. This is an ant mini. This is a case of a patient who had a mass here in the right hilum that was obstructing the right upper lobe, and this entire right upper lobe is collapsed. This is the right horizontal fissure that has been pulled upwards. This is a classic sign. It's called the reverse golden S sign. This is a collapsed upper lobe due to a central obstructing mass. 
Again, comparing with normal, you can immediately identify the abnormality here. If you have a little bit of time, it's worth going through the classic signs of collapse of each of the lobes. Lobar collapse in the acute setting is often due to mucus plugging. So if you have a normal chest x-ray one day and an abnormal collapsed lung the next day, most commonly it's due to mucus plugging in inpatients. If you have lobar collapse in an older patient that's unexplained or non-acute, you need to consider it cancer until proven otherwise. Another classic appearance that you need to burn into your brain is this. There's an increased veil-like opacity over the left lung. When you compare both sides, it becomes more apparent. And there's lucency surrounding the superior aspect of the aorta here. This is another ant mini. This is the classic appearance of a left upper lobe collapse. The left collapsed lung moves anteriorly and the left lower lobe hyperexpands superiorly to take its place. The superior segment of the left lower lobe actually surrounds the aortic arch here and that's why you get this lucency surrounding this aortic knob. This is called the lucicle or lucicle sign. Again, this case is cancer until proven otherwise. You'll also notice on the left here there's volume loss with tenting of the left hemidiaphragm. It's higher than on the right here. Left hilum's pulled up and there's a hilar mass here. Okay, case 11. So this is a 50-year-old patient who presents with shortness of breath. So go through your whole approach. Okay, here there's clearly mediastinal and cardiac shift to the left side of the patient. There is whiteout of the entire right lung. This is a case of a large right-sided pleural effusion. So this patient had a chest tube inserted. This is what a chest tube looks like. And the right pleural effusion significantly improved. You'll notice that there's still residual pleural effusion here on the right. And there's also too many lines on the right here as well. There is what we call re-expansion pulmonary edema in the right lung. So how do we know this was a pleural effusion? Well, when you have white out of the lung, there's a little bit of a differential, and we'll go through that in a bit. But the two main things you want to think about are pleural effusion and atelectasis. When you have atelectasis, you have shift of the mediastinum towards the volume loss, as in the case we showed earlier with the endotracheal tube in the right main stem bronchus. And when you have a pleural effusion, that creates positive mass effect, and the mediastinum shifts the opposite direction. So the most common things you're going to see with whiteout are a large pleural effusion, which shifts the mediastinum away, complete lung collapse, which pulls the mediastinum towards it, pneumonectomy, which will also pull the mediastinum towards it, or complete consolidation. Okay, last case, 60-year-old male who falls on the right chest. So go through your full approach. Okay, to save time, I'll, go, I'll show the abnormality right away. So the lungs, heart, mediastinum, everything was okay here. Looking at the bones and soft tissues, spine looks okay. Looking at the ribs on the right here, so here's the first rib, second rib, third rib, fourth rib, fifth rib. Following it around, you see a discontinuity here on the right. This is a rib fracture. Okay, if we zoom in up on that, you can see that very clearly here. It's slightly displaced. And there's no evidence of pneumothorax here on the right, which is the key uh, finding to make, and there's no uh, pleural effusion. So the sensitivity for a normal PA chest x-ray for rib fractures is pretty poor. It's just over 50%. So when you, even when you have rib, fracture, rib fractures, you're not often going to pick it up. Rib views have a much higher sensitivity. This case is just to remind you to you know, pay attention to the bones and soft tissues. Okay, that's it. So again, use an organized approach. Recognize what the normal chest x-ray looks like. We went through the most common bread and butter lung pathologies, pleural pathologies, mediastinal and hilar pathologies, as well as a few classic signs of lung collapse and uh, a few other cases as well. So, all right, so that's it.